Science. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Rel. And this week I'm going to feature a hot rod build of mine here. This is a 32 Ford three window coupe. These cars always fascinate me and the aura surrounding them and what happened to them. You know, having the hot rod gene in myself, I can completely understand these cars and the builds and everything, and even the evolution of the car guy. So, uh, this brings it all to me and, and that's one of the reasons why I really love building these even though I build a lot of them as the you know right out of the box street rod and it's kind of a fun thing just to get out of my normal uh, muscle cars and everything to, to build some of these even though I have a stash of them and I haven't built a street rod in a while but I love these street rods and it's so much like what happens with the different generations of cars and different generations of uh, uh, car fanatics. So, you know, as I have a, a friend that I recently met that's 21 years old, you know, now born in 2000, which is the year I was married. So relating to him and talking to him, uh, he's, he's a car nut, but he's a car nut of his generation. He loves Hondas and imports. And I can kind of understand that. And it's funny talking to him as, you know, in the early 2000s or mid 90s, I was actually a lot of tenant at a dealer in 93 at a Honda dealer here locally from 93 to 96. And he loves Hondas and he's always talking about the JDM cars and everything. And I understand those are the cars that are cheap and affordable to him at this day and age. And they're 20, 30 year old cars that, uh, you know, are cheap and easy to modify and parts are kind of plentiful. Uh, for the most part, and the, the aftermarket supports them. So I can understand that. Well, it's the same thing with these cars. You know, they came out in the 30s, and it's a 90-year-old car now. This is a 32 Ford. It's weird to think. It's 90 years old. And the people who love these cars when they were brand new, they've all pretty much passed. I mean, if you, you know, I, I don't think 16 years uh, old for getting a driver's license really applied back in the 30s. Uh, that's something I've wanted to look into, but never really did. But, you know, when these cars were brand new and the people who loved them, it was like, oh, the first V8, we could buy them. And, and that was optional. But the people who wanted them stone stock and, and loved them when they were new, they've all passed on for the most part. And then the hot rodders came along when this was a 20 year old car. They were just, you know, garbage lying around, especially after the war. You know, all the GIs came home and, you know, if they couldn't afford a new car, they could afford to buy something like this and fix it up. Well, what was available? You know, brand new 50s cars, you know, say this thing's 25 years old, well, that would be a 57. You know, some of the really hot V8s, you know, 57, 58. But those are brand new and really hard to afford. But, you know, when you get, get 30 years old, you know, some of those engines are a little bit more available. So, you know, putting uh, Buick nail heads in it and Cadillacs in it and hot rodding them, that's, you know, what was available at the time. And these cars were cheap and disposable. So there's those guys that hot rod them. And these were so popular that their sons hot rodded them. And now it's the grandsons. You, you still see these, but they make them, but they're very hard to afford right now for the average Joe. And even, you know, my generation, we love the, the muscle cars and the mini trucks and some of that stuff. I mean, for me, a muscle car was a barely a 25, 30 year old car. And, you know, people were kind of hot rodding them up, but the parts were available. Well, same things going on now with you take that and you put a more modern fuel injected motor into it and you're hot rodding them up. Well, it's the same premise, but different generations like these, these traditional hot rods with their V8s. Um, you know, swapped in. So it's the same kind of stuff, but it's fun to think about that we're the same, you know, us, but we're different. And I was telling uh, the 20 year old guy that it's funny, the evolution of the car guy. For me, you know, growing up in the, the late 80s, 2000s, you know, you had your Mopar guys, you had your Pontiac guys, and you had your Chevy guys, and, your Ford, and we bashed each other. Oh, you, you drive a Ford, you drive a thing and then you know in the 2000s it started to turn into you know american cars versus uh imports and domestics 
you know, it's like, all right, well, you got, you got a rice burner, you got this and that. Well, it's funny as the evolution is going on and everybody is, you know, you're getting into your gas powered versus your electric car. Oh, there's a Prius. Nobody likes a Prius. All us car guys can, can get together and, you know, bag on the electric guys and everything. And it's just technology and a progression of technology. So it's, it, to me, it's a lot of fun to think about all of that stuff and what technology has done and improved on, you know, when you look at what this car was like when it was stock versus what's been, you know, the technology that's been applied to it and as they evolve. So some of these street rods, I, I just love seeing them, seeing the latest stuff and the technology and, and what people do with them. And for me, that's the main thing. I, I love, I love my history. I love my muscle cars. I really do. But, you know, I just have a big passion for cars in general. And I really don't care what anybody does to them. As long as they're building and having fun, doing it themselves, you know, they may be messing up. I may not like what they did to the car. You may have five wings on the back. It may be a low rider with the hydraulics and driving really slow doesn't really appeal to me. But they're pieces of art. And, you know, the owners are having fun. Lifted up donks, big wheels. You know, I, I may not get that, but I can appreciate the guy who spends hours at night working on his car, tinkering with it and improving it and improving upon himself becoming a, a bigger, better person. And I, I can really relate to that. Late nights in the garage, priming something yourself. I got a 64 bug in my garage right now that's a friend of mine that I'm helping work on. So I, I really get into that and I really appreciate some of that stuff and, and stories like that. And it's kind of funny, all us car guys, we can really bond to that regardless of personal tastes. You know, we may not like the demo derby cars. We may not like, you know, donks. We may not like low riders or mini trucks. But as long as it's not rotting away uh, and, and they're enjoying it and having fun and it's their car, I'm all for it. I, I just love it. And, you know, these are these are a representation of that to me. Personal style, personal taste, you know, and, and, and that's just it with these. But these Ravel kits and monogram kits, I think they're all pretty much Ravel. I just like how these go together and what they represent and, and I enjoy building them. Um, and this is one that's pretty much right out of the box. I really didn't do anything to it, just enjoyed building it and the wheels on it. So it's got like the muscle car rake, the kind of a late seventies, eighties vibe to it, which is kind of how I built it. I forget when these kits came out. Um, as far as uh, I think it's early nineties, when some of these come out, so they kind of have that style to them and everything and the taillights. Um, but I really like these and they're just so much fun to build. So if you haven't built one of these, you need to. Um, and then I know the new the new kits coming back out, the Stacy David Rat Roadster has been reissued with some more parts and some kit bashing and, and I just enjoy building these. And I, I usually do them right out of the box and this is one I, I did a long time ago. This is probably 10, maybe 15 years old and just really enjoyed building it. I figured I would show it to you, even though there's really not a whole lot to talk about, um, even though it really does have a small block Ford in it instead of a Chevy, which, you know, I like the Ford Motorsport valve covers and the air cleaners and all the stuff they drop in there. And the steering box, the detail on these is really good. The brakes, the suspension and everything, Ford 9-inch, the exhaust and the tank and these build up really clean and I just kind of went, you know, monochrome or mono paint and just detail everything like a show car versus more of a, an actual uh, racer in a beige interior. But this one is a build right out of the box. And for me, it's just kind of a do something differently with it and everything. And I just really enjoyed it. And this is kind of funny to get this to fit and it's kind of scratching the paint, but it's a snug fit. And I've got a bunch more of these. I got the Roadsters and some of the others and um, the Speed Wagon. Uh, those, are, those are all fun. I'll throw some of those box arts up. But uh, this one's a three-window coupe with the black box art. And like I said, I built this one right out of the box and totally enjoyed it. And really didn't do any changes to it. Just built it and, and just had some fun and went together really well. So I figured I would show this up, kind of break it up uh, a little bit here and show one of my other cars. And we'll get back to another muscle car next weekend, of course. Um, I already know what I'm going to show. 
uh, but we'll get to that next weekend. So thanks for tuning in and subscribing and all your comments. I hope you enjoyed this and appreciate it. And you guys, you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you next Saturday.